Well, I mean, we're in a different world. You know, when I started in ministry, you know, there were eight track tapes. And uh, Christian radio was primarily the way you communicate. Very little religious television. And now with the blog, with the internet, with Twitter, Facebook, social network, you just got so many avenues that you can share the gospel. I mean, we have tens of thousands of people on our courageous Facebook page. Yes, I heard, you know, 10 years ago, that would have been like, who would have come up with that idea? But somebody did. And I think when those avenues are available to you, you ought to find ways to use them. Uh, we can easily say, oh, technology's bad, all these advancements are bad. But I believe that the believer that wants to impact the culture finds ways to take things that could be used for evil and use them for good. You find ways to baptize them and use them in a positive way. You know, our uh, little daily clips uh, from the set are on YouTube. Well, they'll be out there forever. Yeah. You know, and it's just ways for us to get the message out on it and for people to follow and to keep up and to say, hey, we can do that. Something in our church. We could make a YouTube video in our church. We could start a blog site. We could do something. We just open up huge doors. Well, I think you start with what you have. You know, too many ministries, too many churches will go with a viewpoint, well, we don't have anything. Well, what do you have? Uh, do you have a 17-year-old in church that knows how to work the Internet that could start a video blog? You know, do you have anybody that can do that? They do. You know, they have somebody that really loves working on a computer. Get a website. Find a way to make your presence known to this generation. Because uh, this generation is different from the generation I was raised in. And if we keep doing ministry like we've always done it, we'll lose. Uh, we don't change the message. The methods have to expand. Well, leadership begins at the feet of Jesus. And Jesus said, if you want to be great, you'll be a servant. And uh, the reality is, there are people that don't care about technology because they're trying to pay their taxes, trying to pay their house payments, trying to feed their family. They're worried about this guy that their girl's dating, their daughter's dating, or this drug dealer that they hear about that's in the schools that's just been arrested, and about predators and child molesters. If the church doesn't address the ministry across the street and the opportunity across the street, we're no better than the Pharisees who would go around the world to win one convert and not care about the person next door to them. You know, really when you drive off a church parking lot, you're entering the mission field. And America is a mission field. We don't think of it that way. We send missionaries all around the world. But there are hundreds of unreached people groups in the cities of America today that don't speak English, that live in their own little communities. And we've got opportunities for ministry in America. We're one of the largest mission fields in the world. We are still the largest mission sending country in the world. But we are now receiving missionaries from countries where we send missionaries. Now, all that says is they know we're lost more than we know we're lost. You know, they figured out we're in trouble and we haven't figured it out yet. Albany is a declining community. Uh, we've lost uh, several major industries in the last two to three years, thousands of jobs. It's predominantly African-American community. And, uh, you know, I, I think what we've got to do in this community is address who we are, not who we wish we were. You know, we are a, Albany is the ninth poorest city of its size in America. And in the middle of that, God's allowed us to do something incredible so that he alone gets the glory for it. 
we're not rich. I mean, we tell people, so what, just think what you could do if you were in Atlanta. I said, if we had a casting call in Atlanta, it would take people three hours to get there. In Albany, Georgia, it's two lights. <laughs> you know, they can be there in seven minutes. I mean, you couldn't do the last minute things we do in making these movies with volunteers because people would be spread out all over the place. There'd be gridlock on the interstate. Here, everybody lives close. You just say, pick up the phone, call, hey, can you be here in 15 minutes? Yeah, I'll be there. It's just the uniqueness of volunteers making a movie in a small town. Uh, I, I was on a back lot, one of the major networks, major movie theaters, and uh, one of the guys said, you know, we're still trying to figure you out. He said, it makes no sense what you do. You, know, you show these movies for free at screenings, then ask people to invite people to come and pay money for them. And you don't show them the movie critics, and you have volunteers, and they, they're not trained, and, you know, we can't figure you guys out. I said, you know what? That's God. That's the God of it. And I think what resonates with people about Sherwood Pictures is that they look on that screen and they see average people just like them. You know, that are dealing with life issues, marriage issues, family issues, fear issues in the face of the giants, uh, anger issues. They say, you know, other people are struggling just like I am. And it's the every man kind of movie. You know, and God's the hero. You know, we don't have stars. Uh, we have leads. We never say our movies are starring anybody. We have leads because the story is the star of Sherman Pictures. We go across the country and do these screenings. We meet people from every denomination you can imagine. And we instantly have a fellowship and a brotherhood. Because we have one thing that we know we have in common. We're family. We're family members because we're brothers and sisters in Christ. And it doesn't matter what labels we put on. You know, when society is a cesspool, and we're drowning in a cesspool, you don't reach down and say, are you a Baptist? Are you a Methodist? Are you a Pentecostal? Because I can only say Baptist. I can only speak to Baptist. Uh, that would be as narrow-minded as the Pharisees who made externals the measure for fellowship. And Jesus said, it's all about your heart. And that's what I think the key that drives us in these movies is do we have a message that speaks to people's hearts? And if we do, it's a good message. If we start debating other issues, we lose the essential message.